spent all my money. Welcome back to my channel. I did exactly what I was talking about last video where I spent all of my money. I'll show you that in a second, but there was one small thing that I wanted to explain before we start today. So ever since I started this channel, I've never said what the name of the channel was, like actually said how it's pronounced. I've always just said the channel. There's been quite a bit of confusion with that and there's been a lot of people that try to pronounce it but they don't under stand like exactly how it's pronounced. So I thought I would try to explain that. So my YouTube channel's name is Yoichi Films. Everyone seems to get that so wrong. Yoichi, not Yoshi, not Yuchichi, not Yochi, Yoichi. Roll it off of your tongue. <laughs> I really need to do a name change on the channel because I really am not a big fan of Yoichi Films and I want to make it something that's still very Japanese oriented but I can't think of any good names. So Yoichi Films will have to work for now. Other than that, I spent all my money and I got what I needed to finish the 240 for the most part. Yesterday I met up with my friend Bailey who brought me a front subframe that I need to put on the car so then I can uh, get the car straightened up and aligned so it can be drivable again. And I bought the forgotten engine. <laughs> so a lot of people don't like this engine because it came in a turbo version. But there was a lot of base models in Japan that came with the naturally aspirated version. A friend of mine had this engine in his R32 Skyline when he bought it and he wanted to go back to like an RB or something else so he needed to pull this engine out and sell it. He told me a price, it was something that I couldn't really pass up. It's, a, it's an engine that I've always been interested in but nobody in this area has one so I didn't know much about him. So it's kind of something that I can dive in myself and try to learn and show other people that they're cool. Hopefully they are cool. <laughs> so I guess I can show you the engine. Also, sorry for the wind noise. It is like sprinkling and very windy, so sorry. This is an SR20DE. You normally see SR20s and all sorts of 240s and such, and they have a turbo right here. These ones don't. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory. They're a little bit higher compression than a normal SR20, the heads are known for being a little better on flow, and that's really about it. There's not a lot to them, they're very basic. Um, they're kind of like a Miata engine, almost. Like, they remind me a lot of a, uh, a BP16 or 18. Yeah, it was just too good of a deal, I couldn't pass it up. I've been really interested in trying one of these out and trying to build one and see what happens. I'm not actually going to build it, it's more or less just maintain it. So my biggest thing right now is I need to figure out what I'm going to do with it because I bought it without any plans. So that's my biggest thing right now. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do right now is if the V8 blows up, I can put this in there. This could be my backup engine. But if that holds on while I save up some money, if I can find another S13 coupe that's pretty clean, uh, I'll buy that shell, put this in it, and build it as a nice street daily. So hopefully that's what happens. Um, I really can't think of any better ideas. But if all else fails, I might have to sell it. That is a big thing here. Is like, I had a small amount of savings that I was going to use to buy a daily driver, and then I pretty much spent it all on this. So if things were to go south, I might have to sell it. So don't be too keen on seeing more about it because it might be gone by tomorrow. I really don't know how much I want to film today, and I really don't want to work on my car to begin with, but I need to get this subframe swapped out. I really don't have a game plan for it. The worst part about swapping out a subframe is that your engine is mounted to it, and what all the engine weight is set on, and your power steering rack is mounted to it. So I don't want to pull my power steering rack off because that would just cause more work. So I think I might see if I can unbolt my power steering rack from the core support and then zip tie it up somewhere so it's then out of the way but then I don't have to disconnect it and worry about fluid lines and all that other stuff. But I'm going to start by getting the car backed up, getting it jacked up in the front. 
I do have to use my cherry picker because since all the engine weight is sitting on the subframe, I have to lift that weight off a little bit so then I can pull it off. The thing that sucks is my cherry picker slowly loses pressure. Not by a lot, but if I were to keep it up completely, by the next morning it'll be about halfway down. So it, I kind of have to get it done today. I can't like kind of push it off because my engine will just keep falling lower and lower down. So I'll get it jacked up. I can try to get the power steering rack unbolted and pulled up. I need to unbolt my lower control arms, see if there's any other random shit mounted to it. And then there's going to be four bolts on the bottom side of the car that hold it in. I can drop those down and then put my new subframe up there. I had to drop all the suspension on this side because inside where the lower controller mounts in the cross member, that piece of metal got wallered out and was stopping it from coming towards me. So I had to pull everything apart so I would have enough wiggle room to make it around that fucking little piece of shit right here. This is fucking annoying. So far so good, my plan is working. It's kind of hard to show this, but if you look, I have a zip tie under the rack and the zip tie is going up to the header right there to where the rack is actually off of the uh, cross member. So the rack is floating right now. I got a zip tie on both sides. So I'm going to look around the cross member some more and see if there's anything mounted to it. And if everything seems to be clear, I should be able to put the engine on the uh, cherry picker and then... Uh, start dropping this cross member. Hopefully everything goes well. Alright, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the new to the old. On the left we have the new one, on the right we have the old one. This one is all sorts of bent to the back, but this one's straight. That's my issue. That's what bent, and that's why I'm replacing this. Oh yeah, you can really see it there. But I'm going to look over this one more time, make sure there's nothing else I'm going to need. My hanging technique of my... Uh, power steering rack worked pretty decent uh, the thing fell out pretty easily so I'm going to uh, start getting ready to put this new one back in so I've been busting my ass and I got one side back together this is the side that was crashed I have camber again which that was kind of the problem last time is my lower control arm was sucked in, so I lost camber. Front camber's back in, it's pretty aggressive. I think I'm about seven, negative seven degrees camber, something like that. I have my caster as far forward as possible, and it seems decently centered in the wheel well, but my biggest issue that I found was this area right here got wrinkled in, and from that, I've already beat on it to try to avoid it, but with the car lifted up in the air, which causes the suspension to drop, I'm getting real close to that. So I might need to beat that out more once the car's on the ground. 
But I'm gonna keep busting ass on this and get the other side done. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all taken apart. It is a fucking mess over here. And it's a bitch putting all this together. This shit's not easy and not fun. Well, it's easy, but it's like physically demanding. <laughs> this is the best it's looked in a long time. Got everything back together. I got new wheels and tires in the front. I still need to buy another square G6 so I can run all four because yeah <laughs> it still needs an alignment pretty bad um, once I can get an alignment I can actually drive drive the car and see what feels weird and what needs changed but if I can get a alignment soon I might be able to do import face off I have dirt all over my face and my hands are dirty so I can't wipe it off but I think that's all that's going to be filmed today. I really haven't been putting a lot of effort into filming the build lately because it's getting kind of boring. I'm ready to start filming the fun shit again. There was actually a madness yesterday, but uh, it was supposed to get rained out so I didn't even go. But I'm pretty stoked to start going back to these events and uh, seeing all my friends again. In conclusion of today's video, I have an SR20 DE that I don't know what to do with. I have a new subframe in my car and everything seems to be straight. I need an alignment. I don't know if I'll make import face off. <laughs> but that's all I got for today. Thank you guys for watching. Pronounce the YouTube channel name properly next time and I'll see you guys later. Thank you.